Hello everyone, my name is Avkash and in this tutorial we are going to learn the graph neural networks or the GNN from scratch. We are going to use the Python programming language in the Google Colab runtime environment and combining the PyTorch, PyTorch Geometric or PyG, we are going to learn how to get ourselves started for the graph neural networks. This tutorial is divided into two parts. The first part of this tutorial starts with fundamentals of the graph. Then we go a little more deeper and learn the mathematics of the graph. After we have our basics or the fundamentals of the graph prepared, we apply everything we have learned with the network x python package where we build various types of graph and learn everything around creating and manipulating graphs we emphasize a lot on the graph programming using network x and after we feel comfortable in graph programming we get to the introduction of graph neural networks finally we understand the relationship between the graph neural networks and the convolutional neural networks and that gives us the introduction to the graph convolutional neural network or GCN where we learn the implementation of these neural networks in the PyTorch geometric or the PyG package. We use PyG package to learn the basics of the graph neural networks and by using the various graph data manipulation techniques we apply the pi geometric package and the network x package vice versa together to learn the basics of graph neural network so that's all we have in this first part of the tutorial in the second part of this tutorial, we start with graph neural networks where we learn the mathematics of graph neural networks and we learn to program various types of graph neural networks using PyG or PyTorch geometric package. After that, we perform various experimentations with GNN or the deep learning experimentations with GNN and create various neural networks for our GNN experimentations. We also cover few real world GNN examples to perform the full end to end training as well as the inference combining graph neural networks with the PyG packages. My objective with this two part graph neural network series is to get you started with your own journey in graph neural networks. In this two part series, you are going to learn everything you need so that you could start your own journey in graph neural networks. So without any further delay, let's get ourselves started. The content used in this tutorial has been taken from several different locations available on internet. I have gone through the GitHub. I have also gone through the various bloggers and I have created this tutorial by combining all the information available all over the internet so that I could explain to my audience. Most of the information has taken from articles like these available on the Medium website as well as I have also looked into the documentations from the network X as well as the PyG Python libraries. I do appreciate for all these content providers who helped me to create this tutorial and wherever applicable I have added the reference of the images as well as the content in my presentation as well as in my Jupyter Notebooks. There could be several examples and use cases we can search in various verticals related with graph. However, 
for the sake of completeness related with our topic the graph convolutional neural networks or graph neural networks our objective is to find some of those examples which are applicable to our understanding far more better and here is a list of various examples so for example if we are looking into the google knowledge graph the examples for google knowledge graphs are seo means search engine optimization and for the definition of the google knowledge graph the nodes can refer to people place things and various other properties related with that and the connectivity between these two, these nodes will be referred as connection if we look the example of chemical molecular structure the examples will be various molecular structure and there is a massive amount like that. so the nodes will be the atom and the edges will be the bonds in between those atoms next in the document citation network we can talk a lot about it because the natural language processing is a very big example of graph neural networks for that reason we can say that there could be several examples such as Cora data set is one more popular but you can take various natural language processing examples and you can relate them with document citation network so the nodes will be the documents and the citation by the person could be the edge or you can also use some other way to connect these documents and define them as edges for the social media networks person could be the node or in different social media networks there could be several other personal properties can also be part of node and the connectivity between these nodes will be defined as connection and the uses could be a lot such as influences virality content could be in any particular ways the network design security there could be the devices a loss of devices their type and depending on the functional properties of these devices could be part of nodes and the connectivity between these two nodes or the multiple nodes will be defined as connections the network design security you can actually define which particular node is part of network which is not and there could be several other uses can be also defined within network security the one we also have is a financial transaction are uh, quite close to me because i have worked in those problems so financial fraud and time money laundering so in that scenario the various transactions happening during a particular one single complete transaction could be nodes and the connectivity how these transactions are happening will be part of those edges so these examples are not limited to but we brought them here so that we could understand little more about the problem scope means if we are understanding these graph neural networks we should have better idea that where they are going to applicable so the understanding domain is definitely going to help us learn better so here is an example for the chemical molecular structure as you could see that the visual representation of your molecular structure glycine if we take another example which is related with financial fraud or anti-money laundering here you could see the connectivity between for example the money transfer chain from one account all the way to all last account you can understand that how the anti-money laundering system detect using the graph neural networks that which particular transaction is fraudulent or actually it's a it is true for money laundering specification and there could be various other networks as well we have another example related with social networks here uh, the example uh, we have taken from ncbi related with the social network centrality measurement of the top 10 words on major covid 19 themes so here you could see that social media data has been collected and validated for the healthcare purposes however the information is collected using the social media networks and process it these fundamentals are very important for us to understand the graph neural networks the complexity we are going to have while we are going to process different examples related with graph neural networks they will be far easier if we will have the basic understanding of graph 
So for that reason, we are spending next few minutes related with fundamentals of graph. For the starter, a graph is a collection of vertices and edges. These vertices are also referred as nodes or the points. During this tutorial, we are going to refer nodes as vertices or the points. So nodes will be mostly used word going forward. These nodes are connected with edges. So nodes can have the information what you would want to represent your graph. For example, nodes can have strings, nodes can have numbers. These strings can refer to whatever information you would want. If the node is A, A could be anything. It could be a place, person, thing, atom, whatever you would want to refer for. If the node is 1, 2, 3, 7, 9, 10, 10.2, then the representation of those values will be all depend on what you would want to make your graph represent. So it is very important that when you are processing a graph, you should know what is the node refers to. A graph can be directed or can be undirected. Directed means the connectivity between the two nodes are directed with a direction. It means it has a direction built into it. It means the connectivity between these two no nodes start from node A or source node and it connect to the destination or the target node. If the graph is undirected, it means the relationship or the connectivity between the given two nodes are not defined and it can be referred as required by the graph manipulation. Here visual representation you could see that nodes are connected with the edges having direction versus non-direction. So directed graph is very clear for us to understand. Now we are going to understand that what are the weighted graphs. So a weighted graph is a graph where the edges are labeled by the numbers and these weights could be anything what you are going to define. As we have nodes defined by you, the connectivity defined by your network requirement and the edges having these weights are also defined by you. So the whatever the weights represent that is part of graph definition. So a weight is a numerical value that has to be attached to each individual edge. So each branch must have some weight as defined in the weight rule. Sometimes there may not be a weight, then you could say that the weight for that particular edge is zero. Here you can see the first one top left is a undirected and unweighted versus the top right you have undirected but it is weighted. The third one is a directed but there is no weight associated with that which is on your bottom left and finally at the bottom right you have a directed and weighted graph. So there could be mostly these four types of graphs you are going to see as we process various examples. One big example of two very large social networks, one we have Facebook and second we have Twitter. The Twitter, the directed edges because the whole business model of Twitter is the following a person. As a person or as a professional, you create your own profile and various other person, they follow you. It means the Twitter is a directed as is, which really tells that who is following who or whether if both person are following each other. So that's a Twitter, which is most of a directed edge network versus the Facebook, where you as a person have your profile and you are related with various other professionals and that relationship could be as defined by the network. However, so these two examples really shows the real uses of directed versus undirected graph. A complete graph or a fully connected graph is a graph where every node is connected with every other node. It means you are always going to get a network where all nodes are connected with each other. It means that that graph is a fully connected graph. So 
question comes that why graphs are hard to understand and there could be really very large lecture can be given to you however just in few sentences we could understand it the graphs are hard to understand for two big reason because when we try to process the information such as images data text music sound file those are all converted into the data so they all can be represented into the euclidean space and they also have the fixed form or representation versus the graphs they cannot be represented properly in a euclidean space so the question comes what is the euclidean space in nutshell it's a three dimen dimensional space it means if you have a box in this three dimensional space no matter from which angle you see you are always going to get the value of x y z properly and that can be understood depending on whoever would want to process it in whatever way however when we look into the graph the graph have they cannot be represented in a euclidean space because the nature of the information and the and the way they are being created so here is an another example of a really very giant graph and depending on how you would want to process it it will be represented very differently so why we should use graphs so first they give the very intuitive representation of abstract concepts such as relationships and interactions so relationship trying to create on paper versus you can explain them very intuitively to the person so they give a mental picture of the information how it is connected the way we interpret relationship between humans can also be represented within the graph so the understanding of graph seems to be more close to human as we understand the relationship sometimes you can take graph and the graphs they help us to understand a very large problem as a very small scale and that's the example of molecular structure the very complex molecular structure can be broken down into smallest group of information to understand better and sometimes these graphs they take a very large complex problem and represent it in a way that various perspective can be applied to understand the problem and solve it with whatever problem we really need to apply here is a one really very good example i would want everybody to take a look so here is a game of thrones relationship graph so there are 84 characters in game of thrones so 84 characters and the relationship among various tribes and all that thing was easily and very clearly explained and understood by others so for that reason graphs are really very popular for the information representation which is connected among various group of information see we have already understood the correlation in data science correlation is the relationship among all the features in a given data set when we look into the relationship in the graph that can take this concept and can exceed it to exponential level because of the way relations are created just to understand the relationship and the correlation are two separate contexts but graphs help us to understand this kind of relationship which we have seen in this right side of image so for that reason these graphs are really very important and helpful for us to understand a special type of information here in this given example graph information is represented in two separate ways. one is an interaction graph where you could see that different units within a particular healthcare system how they interact with each other where the interaction is really very heavy and where the interactions are fairly less when we look into the relationship graph in that scenario you can also look into the activity within those healthcare department how they are related what information is mostly going to be processed by others so the interaction and the relationship between the graph represent how the information or how that whole organization of the information is represented 
within the graph. So in the computer science, we have already seen the various traditional graph analysis method. So we have seen already breadth first search, depth first search. There are several search related algorithms where we have processed the graph and there are sortest pattern spanning tree algorithms as you could see here. So various of these graph analysis methods we have already used in data structure. So why we are looking into the graph neural networks or the graph special because the above or these ones what we are seeing here they are limited based on their use cases. They are very applicable to a certain kind of problem. They cannot be generalized on various problems. For that reason we are looking into the graph and the graph neural networks to solve our general other problems. Next, we are going to understand a little mathematics of graph and it is not really very complex. It's really very simple and try my very best to make it even more simpler for you. So please stay with me just for few few more minutes because this is really very important and if you understand that it is really going to help you immensely when we are going to build the graph and process these graphs using Python. So we have already learned a graph is a collection of nodes and the connectivity between those nodes. So there could be so many nodes. So we could say the vertices are basically a collection of all the nodes. I have two graphs here where we have edges and there is weighted graph means every edge has some weight. So for the left side graph, the vertices or the nodes are A, B, C, D, E, F. So these are and the edges are represented as A, B, A to B, B, C, B to C if there is those connectivity. So you can represent either this way or this way. So this is the representation of your vertices and edges. And a graph equals to vertices and edges in parentheses. So a graph is a collection of vertices and their edges. Vertices comes first, edges come second because vertices are there. Only then you could have edges in between them or among them. So right side, we have the weighted graph. Here you could see that the representation is really very simple for the vertices. However, for the edges, we are also adding their weights associated with that. So neighbors are defined in the graph as the two nodes that are connected with an edge are called neighbors. So if we look into here A, so the B and C are the neighbors for the A. The E and F are the neighbor for E and F are the neighbor for C. And if we look into the F is the neighbor for C, D and D because it's connected with that. So E and F are the neighbor for C. So E and F are the neighbor for C and D is the neighbor, neighbor of the B. So here you could get an idea that what the neighbors are. You have to have a direct connection with that particular node to be considered as the neighbor. Here you can represent the edges. So as you could see here for this undirected graph, we have nodes and the connectivity between them and defined with their weight. So AB 12 and if you look into the previous one as you could see here AB 12 is the actual representation is here. So AB 12, AC 10. So everything what we are seeing here is represented as the edge list for the weighted graph. If there are no weights then it will be just AB, AC depending on how they are. If the edge are directed and, and as you could see here, we have added few more. Here you could see that AB is 12. However, the BA is 34. That is a directed representation of the information or the connectivity between the graph nodes. Here, the directed and unweighted. So still, as you could see here, that there are no weights associated with that, but the edges are represented properly. And finally, now we are coming into the adjacency matrix. It is very important part of graph. So adjacency matrix is a 2D square matrix. Why 2D square? Simple reason. Because the nodes are available in both dimension X and Y. So total number of nodes on X and total number of nodes on Y. So that's why it's a square matrix. The unweighted graph 
the value could be add as a true and false connectivity we are looking next or they could be 1 and 0. Same thing for the weighted graph the value would be given as a weight and where there is no weight you could use as 0 or negative 1 but negative 1 is better because if there are no weights then you could write there 0 but sometimes the 0 could also be the weight. So the representation of adjacency matrix is a equals n by n because the total number of nodes times total number of nodes and we are going to build the adjacency matrix for various graph types here. So here we have a b c d e f six node and six nodes are here and here this is a weighted but undirected graph. The connectivity between a to a so everything is negative so all the diagonal values are negative one and where the weight is given so a to b is 12 a to c is 10 rest is all negative 1 b to d is 8 so b to b is 8 so only 1 same thing c to e is 15 and c to d is 7 and e to f is 12 and f 2 and f there is nothing so as you could see here this is the way the connectivity is defined for the undirected and weighted graph. However, what if weighted and directed? In this scenario, as you could see here, not big changes wherever the connectivity was. So for example, there is AB and BC. So AB is 12 and BA is 34. Very quickly, you can understand the direction A to B 12 and B to A is 34. So this adjacency matrix helps us to understand for the directed versus undirected graph. Just looking into that, you could make sure that between these two, we can very easily understand how the information is represented between nodes and their connections. Next, we look into the unweighted but directed graph. The connectivity where it is, it's represented as a true tree or you can also use one and zero here. So true and false and 1 and 0. Rest all that edges, all the diagonal values are f, means they are false. If it is directed, if it is undirected, in that case, again, it's some representation. So directed and direct, once we look into the adjacency matrix, the problem automatically solves for us. Finally, we can look into the weighted and directed. As you could see here, then the adjacency matrix we are looking into here. So here are the values and if we would want to understand the connectivity or the connection to those uh, adjacency matrix for A to B. So we can understand A to B, we could go by A to B. If you want to go C, we can go A to C. If you want to go A to F, so here A to F, so A, C, E, F, A, C, E, F. If you would want to go A, C to D, adjacency for C to D, then C to D, you have to go from C to E, E to A, A to B and B to D. So that's the adjacency going to the networks because they are still connected. If you look into the B to C, so B to C is not possible. So B to C, there is no adjacency is built into. So based on these five images, you should have clear understanding of what is the adjacency because that really helps us to understand when we go look into processing the graph details. So based on this information, we can very quickly understand two simple concepts, the complete graph and the sparse graph. So in the complete graph, all elements of the adjacency matrix are either one and true, but there will be all true because every node is connected with every node except the diagonal. So that should be very clear too. So it's a complete graph of fully connected graph. The path exists for each and every node. So there will be paths for each and every node, complete graph. However, if you are looking into the sparse graph, then not all elements of adjacency matrix A are one or two. It means there will be lot, lots of negative one or the false or the zero. And not every node is connected to each other. So at this point, it's fairly easy to understand the complete and the sparse graph. Next, we are going to learn the feature matrix or node attribute matrix. So feature or the attribute of each node. Sometimes we have to understand that 
a node itself has a feature built in. As you could see that we have edges and edges have their weights. Similar to that, a node can also have its own feature. So that's what we look into feature matrix and that is represented in the graph called X. So a graph with n node with size of the node attribute as f will be matrix will be this shape of n times f. Here you can see that I have two document. One document is could be very large but we are just making a very simple sentence. So we have I travel to Himalaya and the second document has sentence I travel to Las Vegas, Nevada. And if we get a corpus, we will find all the words which are common shared across all the documents but not duplicated. For that reason, total number of elements are seven. So that's the corpus size is seven. Here is the document one, here is the document two. And as you look into the frequency or their availability in each document is represented as one or true, zero or false. So the shape of node attributes or the feature matrix X will be the N of F. So there are two nodes, two documents, F, which is a seven. So two times seven is 14. So that's the feature matrix. And this example is a representation of the bag of words illustration as the node features. It could be document, could be sentence, could be paragraph, could be a simple tweet. That's how you can build the feature matrix for your graph. Here is a very tricky question. The question is that you are watching the adjacency matrix and all the diagonals values are one. Remember previously we have all seen the diagonals values are all negative one. So if you see an adjacency matrix where actually the diagonals values are true or they are connected, what it can be? Is it possible? Think about it. Pause the video and think about it because it's a very important concept in the graph. So self-loop, it means that every node is connected to itself. That's the reason it's considered as a true scenario. And it can also associate a weight depending on, again, the definition of your graph. So we have understood the basic concepts of graph, which were very important for us to understand the programming part of the graph in Python. So next we are going to create the Python program related with graphs. And the library we are going to use is the network X. The network X library is open source, is popular for processing graphs in Python. So I will be using the Google Colab because it already has the network X installed and this Jupyter notebook will be available for you. So if you would want to run it, you can run it either Google Colab or you can run on your local machine. So I already have the network X installed in my machine. So I will be importing network X and I will be referencing it as NX everywhere. So very first we are going to define a graph. So G is our graph. And if you would say, oh, I would want to see or visualize it. Actually, you could visualize it. You could say that NX dot draw and visualize the G for me. And as And here is your graph. As you see that you have defined a graph, but there is nothing to show you. So for that reason, you are not seeing anything here. However, we are going to start adding more nodes to it. And then after we are going to define the connectivity. So here you see I'm adding a node and I'm seeing here. And now you can see a node is available. Is as you see here that I am creating a node from it means that when you say add node, you are adding a node. And if you are saying add nodes from, it means you are providing a list of collections from where the nodes can be added. So this could be a collection, could be array, could be whatever it, your node definitions are. So now we have added two more nodes, two and three. And if you could see here, you will find three different ABC. And if we try to draw again, and again, as you see that the location of these nodes 
are random. And that's where you can get the idea of the Euclidean space when we are trying to see the graph because graph is loosely designed structure. It's not referenced in the Euclidean space. For that reason, everybody will see graph differently. Now you see that I'm adding add age one and two. Here, the add age means we are adding the edge between one and two. So as you could see here, one and two is here and three will be there. So the relationship between one and two is defined here. Now I'm adding one more edge between two and three. And as you could see here, that one to two and two and three. So this is your graph. We have added three and one, and now your graph is there. And as you could see here, every time we are trying to build, it will create a different view of our graph. Now we are adding add nodes from four and five. It means we are adding nodes here. So four and five will be added. So one, two, three is here and four and fives are here. Now we are creating the edge between five and one. So four is isolated here and one, two, three, four it is still there. So this must be one because one has connection to five and one is also connection connected to two and three. So as you could see here, the changes in your view. Now in the same graph, we are adding nodes six, seven, eight. So these are the new nodes are being added and we are creating the edges six, seven and seven, eight. So let's build this. So as you could see here, that six, seven, eight is added and six to seven and seven to eight is added. So there are three separate pieces of information. I think this is the four which was not used so far for the connectivity. So here, if you would want to know the number of nodes, there are number of nodes are eight, number of edges. There are six edges in our graph. You can also represent the edges or the nodes. So here you could see that the edge view one, two, one, three, because we haven't given the weight for these edges. So that's why you are just seeing the way the edges are defined. In the node view, all the nodes are one to eight available here. And this is your graph. So for the starter, this way you could understand how your graph was created by a pool of nodes or just adding node by node and then adding the edges. However, if you do not have the nodes and you nodes or if you would want to create an edge, you can add and the node will be automatically added there. So for example, if we are coming here and we can say that G dot, we can say add and you can see that add edges. So if we can say add edge and we can say that we are adding 21 and 22. And these nodes are not there, but we are creating an edge between connectivity between 21 and 22. Here is our created mx dot draw and g. So here you could see that we have also added the edge 21, 22. So this could be the 21, 22. Next, we are going to take the graph and try to learn how we could export in other understable structures. So here we are imp importing this JSON graph. So we could export our graph information to JSON. So here you see that JSON graph and we are passing our G which is our graph. So it represent JSON data. Here you see this is a false means it's not a directed graph. Here is a graph equals this and here are the links source one to target one and it's not a multi graph and nodes all the nodes from 1 to 21 which we have explained. So this JSON data should help you very quickly understand what it is. Sometimes you have a very big graph then this JSON data may not be easily readable because it's so much information however you can take this JSON data and you can send it to other structures where it can be processed by other softwares. Here if you have a JSON data as you could see our JSON data and we have node link graph 
and here you could see node link data so we are actually using the node link graph and this is a json data to graph and it became the graph and here you could see that this is basically the graph so you can pass your json data and you can recover your graph back because when you are playing with your graph everything is in python memory so if you'd want to save it and reread it that's the best example because now you have this json which is a string you can save to disk and that would be enough for you to persist it and you can recover it here if you look into this is your graph so it's just wanted to show you that whatever you have read recently everything is okay now in that data you if you would want to add more nodes to it so i think 9 10 8 is there but 9 10 11 was not there so you can add 9 10 11 these are the new nodes are added and you will see three more nodes are added if you would want to remove certain nodes you can use remove nodes or remove nodes from it means collection nodes whenever you say from it means it's coming out from a collection and collection is provided by you so now we will remove 10 and 11 and then we will represent there will be only two I think 4 and 9 because 10 and 11 are removed here so at this point if we look into the g g is actually is directed it will be false if you are looking into the multigraph and is false and reason i just wanted to show you that we have just created the basic graph we haven't defined is the directed graph it means that we want to build the directed graph correct in order to build the direct graph we have to define and now if you say how many types of graphs are available in network x you will be amazed to see that the documentation related with network x it is the documentation as you look into there are various kinds of graphs you could create so we were using initially if you remember earlier we have started nx dot graph so now we are creating the generate graph ml so by passing our graph we are generating the graph ml if you would want you can export it and save it if you would want to clear your graph it means remove everything you can call g dot clear and it's going to remove all of your graph completely from memory if it is removed only option you have is to reload from your persistent did a story so it's a be careful when you are making this graph is cleared and nothing exists in our graph now so here in next few examples we are going to use various ways to or methods to create our graph here you see that i'm taking the ed edges from one to two and one to three and creating a graph so one two two and one two three and we are also printing the, the edges and the nodes so here are the edges and here are the nodes and printing the graph however if you would want to add node so here you could say i'm adding okay if you are saying that add node spam and add nodes from spam they represented very differently reason because add node from is became the structure array so everything we will be considered as character here here at node a spam will be just one because you are adding one single node so here you could see in this example that we are building this so remember we haven't clean our graph so one to two and one to three is still there and these spam are added so as you could see here one of them will be the spam and remaining will be the spam if you run this thing again you will see that the spam was already there so spam node cannot be duplicated so add is there add spam worked and the add node is also there so hopefully that clarifies you that how you are going to use the add node and add nodes from the order is basically the number of nodes if you see here written the number of nodes in the graph so when you are using collab very quickly you could get an idea of what that api refers to if you would want to understand what is the density of your graph here is the density of the graph and if you would want to get the idea of the density as you could see here that we are importing this density function from the network and if you look into this documentation of density here you can get 
the density for the undirected graph there is a mathematical function and there is a density for the undirected graph if you would want to get the degree for this graph that's here is the degree view and again let's look into what is the degree so it returns degree view of single node or a bunch of nodes if n bunch is omitted then return the degree of all nodes so if you see here that n bunch is none no weight is given so it's given for all the nodes once you got the degree if you want to build the histogram here is the degree histogram if you would want to understand what is the degree histogram refers to you can always look into the documentation the documentation and here is the degree histogram it returns a list of the frequency of each degree value so each degree value so whatever your degree value was so if you look into the degree value so the frequency of each degree value so i think 0 is 5 1 is 2 and 2 is 1 so 0 1 2 so all the frequency for the degree is being given to you histogram here we are looking into the neighbors so the neighbors we have already studied the part of neighbors means you have to have the direct connection among the nodes to be considered neighbor so this could be directed or undirected does not matter if it is directed then we we can say who is the neighbor for who so if you look into here the neighbors are defined here so there is a neighbors is basically the iterator it means we have to get all the neighbors so now we first we are going to get all the neighbors then we are going to iterate them. that neighbors is the key iterator so dictionary says a dictionary so if we would want to get all the items related with the neighbors one option is that we could actually look into for every node so if you look into g dot nodes these are the all the nodes so we can say for node in g dot nodes and first let's print it so print node so we are getting all the node and then we can say that we could get g dot neighbors for the node and it's dictionary so we could convert that to list and list is being printed so for one node two three two neighbors spam no neighbors spam no neighbor so this is how you are going to get the list of all the neighbors now we can clear our graph it's empty now again here we are building the path graph so if you say what is path graph so returns the path graph p of n totally connected linearly connected nodes so let's see we are creating the path graph of four edges and four connections between all of them so is weighted false between graph for two and three is not weighted draw and then is weighted is directed okay let's look the example of path graph and if you see here these are the various graphs generators so all different kinds of graphs generators are available so you could create various types of graph depending on your problem requirement here we are creating the directional graph so far we haven't created any directional graph so let's call it this is our directional graph we are defining as a directional graph we are adding the edge and adding the weight also and as you could see here there is a connection built into arrow so connection from 1 to 2 with the weight 1 is weighted yes is directed yes if you would want to get various other information related with this so you can say g dot nodes if you would want to see g dot edges here are the edges if you wouldn't say g dot order which is the number of nodes to num number of nodes 
So what I really wanted to show you at this point is that you can get an idea that it doesn't matter whether you have directional or non-directional or just a graph, any graph, all the APIs or all the functions will work as for any other type of graph. Here we are creating another directional graph. So whenever we say g equals nx dot die graph, the previous graph is uninitialized and new graph is initialized. That's why we do not uh, need to clear it. And here 1, 2, 2 and 3, 2, 2. So 1, 2, 2 and 3, 2, 2. So this must be true. And that's what we have built. Here is another graph. Now we are adding, as you could see here, 1, 2, 2, 3, 2, 2, 1, 2, 2, 3, 2, 2, and this is 6 to 8. So if we try to run multiple times, every time you are going to see a different view of it. Order, the number of edges, and the number of nodes is all defined here. Here we are creating another one where different weights are listed here, and we are creating the graph and here is the order and various other properties we are trying to print here. So we have created the graph, all the edges, all the vertices. After we have built the directed and undirected graph, next we are going to learn the neighbors and the adjacency. So this is the graph we have built earlier. This is the directional graph, but rather than using these node as an one, two, three number, we are using the characters here, but everything is same. And as you could see here, all the neighbors, G dot neighbors, and for the A, the neighbor is B. If you say for all neighbors, in that case, you are going to get all the neighbors for all the nodes. We have already seen how you could process it. So if you would want to build this thing, same thing which we have done earlier here, we could perform the same. So for A, B, C, M, N, A, B, C, M, N, here are the neighbors. So here you could see the neighbor of A is B. If you would want to get the neighbor of M, you can use this and you can say, I would want the neighbors of M. Here are the N and B. various neighbors for your so you once you get the neighbors now we can go look into the adjacency matrix because that was the next part we have to understand and we theoretically we have already understood that so now we are going to build the adjacency matrix so here is just a sorted method if you would want to sort your all the neighbors so here is going to sort it now adjacency matrix of the g and as you could see here this is what the adjacency really look like. So for the concept perspective, we can look into our adjacency here. So if you remember, this is what the adjacency we have built. So you have all the nodes on X and Y axis, and then we look into what their weights are. If the weights are not there, then the values are non negative one or zero. So here is the A, which is the adjacency matrix of G, and here is values. If you remember in this graph, the weights are defined here, 1, 5, 25, and 50. So that's what we are seeing here, 1, 5, 50, and 25. If you would want to know the diagonal, here you could see that this is the diagonal. So A dot diagonal, everything is zero. Reason it's showing it, because if you would want to understand the self loop, that can also be detected. Now, if you take this NumPy array and convert your, your G value, which is your graph, and you see, you are also getting your adjacency matrix, but in the form of NumPy array. So this method is also very useful for you. Here, if you take the diagonal, you see, and then you multiply by two, A dot diagonal, so I think if we look into this A here, A, so A dot diagonal, and if we run it, it will work. Because at this point, we have converted to the NumPy array. So this math multiplication could not happen. So let me put it down here. So that would be more referenced. 
properly. So here we took the diagonal multiplied by 2 and set a new diagonal but because of everything was 0 it turns out result will still be 0. So you have understood the, the adjacency matrix neighbors for a directed and undirected graph. There is a, another example I have down where we are using the uh, directional value as well. So you are going to an undirectional value and the, the application of non-negative else also. So now we are creating the multi-directional graph. So we already have the directional. Now between the two nodes, you can have multiple edges. That's why it's called as a multi-edges. So multi-edges direct, directional graph. So here we are creating 0 to 1 and 1 to 0. And some have weight, some doesn't have weight. So as you could see here, this 0 to 1, 1 to 2, and then 2 to 2. So this is a 0 to 1, 1 to 2. So it's a both way. And this is 2 to 2. So 1 is a weighted and 1 is not weighted. So that's very important for you to understand that we are using this. So you could understand within the single node, there are multiple edges are created with weights and not weights. So here is the matrix. And if you would want to take this and convert this G to the adjacency matrix, let's see what happens. So the A equals to NX dot adjacency matrix of G print A so 0 to 1 1 as you could see here adjacency matrix here and if we look into you see and this is if you would want to print to the matrix format so we could say let me just print this way a dot to dense. So as you could see here, this value is 4 because the way this relationship is defined. So hopefully that clarifies you the multi-directional graph. So we have started graph, directional graph, multi-directional graph. Now we are building another one. And one big difference here is that what we are trying to say is that what if there are certain weights set as zero. So here you could see that we are setting weights as zero so that when we are converting to the adjacency matrix, we are saying that non edges are negative one. For that reason, everything is became the negative one. So here we could create the adjacency matrix. So NX dot adjacency matrix of G and if we would try to see uh, check if the non if uh, I think what I'm trying to check if the non edge can be set here and as you could see that this API does not have the non edge so it has weight equals weight so we can actually print as print as it is first so we have z print of a and then print a to dense so all the value and here is the adjacency matrix printed here but the to numpy we could set non edge as negative ones rather than zero you now we can look into the multiple edge attributes and reason what I want to show you is that the edge could have multiple attributes. So not only weight, you can also have the different attributes. So here you could see that we are adding the edge in simple graph. First we are adding the weight, then we are adding the cost in case we are not adding any weight here. So there is an extra attribute and here in this we are adding the weight and we are also adding the cost. So here is our you see that a of weight so we are creating the adjacency matrix for the weight here we are creating the adjacency matrix for the cost 
So you could get that because we had two of these different type. We had weight and we had cost. So we got weight and cost and rest is our number of edges, and the, the edges and the vertices or the nodes. Now we are creating the edges from this way and as you see that we have the nodes and the weights for that. And then we are returning the adjacency representation of graph as the dictionary of dictionaries. So to dictionary of dictionaries. And here is our value. So after the value is printed here, so this is the D. So dictionary of dictionaries. So 0, 1 of the weight, 2 weight. So depending on 0 to 1, 1 to 2, 2 to 0, 0 to 1, 1 to 2, and 2 to 0. So hopefully that should be clear to you now. Next. So this is a multi-graph, not the directional graphs. So this is the fourth one we are looking into. So this is a multi-edges. It means the nodes can have multiple edges, but it's not directional. So here is the key and here is the weight. So value could be key and a string. And this is the dictionary of dictionaries. Now we are creating another one. And here what we want to see is that you take the, your graph and as you see here, we are to pandas edge list. So df will be the pandas edge list. So let's run it and I will be showing you one by one. A to B cost is one, weight is seven. C to E cost is nine weight of the so there should be two independent graph so we have validated it then we draw the edges are a to a a to b and then c to e the nodes are a b c e everything is okay then we are creating the pandas edge list so here is the pandas so source target weight and cost that should be very clear so we have whole pandas data frame available for us here is the pandas edge list but we are selecting the node list b and e so as you could see here, the node lists are B and E. So it's starting from B and E. So because of this is a graph, direction could be any direction. So that's why the node list is B and E. So selected is B and E. So B to A and E to C. And the weights and cost is also as it is. Remember, this is a direct non-directional graph as it could be any way. Then we are creating the pandas edge list and here the node list is A and C. So A to B and A to C to E. So that's similar to that like by default because rather than selected nodes, we are just using as all the nodes here. And finally, DF of source target cost and weight. So here is DF of source target cost and weight. So hopefully you can get an idea that how we are taking the graph and splitting that data into a pandas data frame and can also filter depending on the particular nodes we are interested into. Here we are printing the adjacency matrix for the same graph. So it is the same graph, I think exactly. And here is the adjacency matrix for this graph. So I think it's just last one line is important. Here is the our last one line. So that is the adjacency matrix for our given graph. Now multi graph and there is a cost, there is a cost. So A to B, there are two edges with cost one and cost nine. And here is A to B. So I think you can get an idea the node list and the edge key. So here is the E key. So edge key is re referred as E key. So cost, E key. So there are various examples I have and I really wanted to show you with these examples that you could understand the library network X first and you can also understand how various these four key types of graphs are going to be very useful for you to understand. However, there are various other types of graphs are still applicable and that you could create by yourself creating the multi graph and again here is the edge key so previously we have used this multi graph and cost 1 2 and here is a cost 1 9 and here is the adjacency matrix okay so then these two are we are just adding in this one just the adjacency matrix so here is the 0 2 2 because it, there are only two nodes so 
we have covered four different types of graphs in this example graph then digraph means directional graph then multi digraph means mul multiple direct graph and multi graph means multi graph means the graph with no directional edges but multiple edges in between nodes here is one example i wanted to show you so you can get an idea that what does it mean here very last we have a sudoku graph you can create the sudoku sudoku graph and you by default is the n equals 3 so just create a 3 by 3 and sudoku graph and we have created this first where the default 3 by 3 and then we have printed the total number of nodes so you see total number of nodes are 81 total number of edges is this and looks like it's if you would want to know about this graph so for example g is our graph and you would want to learn various things so you can say is directed false false it's not directed it's not multi-graph so sudoku graphs by default it is that way here the adjacency matrix so here you could see because of these are 81 by 81 i think the dot 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 is the condensed representation of this graph and that's our and if you try to rebuild again you are going to get a very different look here we are creating the two by two graph and because it's much more easy to view so hopefully that give you another idea that how you could use these various graph types and process them as really needed there is a sky is the limit for you because so much information is there and this library is very big so there could be a lot more tutorial i could create for you to understand various different graphs and their functionalities related with whatever you would want to process one more example i have is related with grid graph so let's look into the grid graph so you can set up the grid graph so i could pass two by two for example so let's create a two by two grid graph so let's create the grid graph so nx dot grid graph and let's store g equals and then nx dot draw of g okay and grid graph here is a dim is two three four let's take example here so here is a grid graph which is two by three by four if you would want to change this to four by four so let's use this and you can actually pass an array of four by four So that's a four by four. So this is a grid graph four by four. Let's rebuild again. The view will be different, similar to that. Here is a two by three by four grid graph. So you can get an idea that even if you take the G and if you say that, oh, I would want to get the adjacency matrix. So you can say A equals to NX dot adjacency matrix of G and that should give you an idea so most of the nodes is going to have three connectivity if you have four by four one two three one two three and the edges will have two so you can actually parse this whole graph with the node which have three or four edges similar to here two and three edges so there are several other experimentation you could do with the grid graphs that pretty much enough for us to get our feet wet with the network acts as i mentioned that there is a lot more to dig into so please take your time and dig and if you have any question feel free to let me know and i will be very happy to assist so we have just completed the graph programming in python with network x we have used the network x python library and everything we have completed in our Jupyter Notebook. So this Jupyter Notebook will be available in this GitHub repo related with this project. So that's a DeepWorks and Graph Neural Networks. So I will Graph 
deep works and graph neural networks so let me export this so file save a copy in github so this jupyter notebook is available in this graph neural networks folder at the deep works so after that we are going to learn the graph neural networks So what are the graph neural networks? So graph neural networks, they can be directly applied to the graph. So if you have neural networks and they can be applied to the graph, we call them graph neural networks. With graph neural networks, you can do the classification and the prediction task at the node level, edge level, and overall graph level. So that's if you have a graph and where you could apply the neural networks and you can perform the classification and prediction task at the node, edge and graph level, now you have a graph neural network. There are three types of neural uh, graph neural networks. One is recurrent graph neural network, a spatial convolutional ne network and a spectral convolutional network. For the sake of time, and the complexity i will not be going to go deep into the each one of these networks however we are going to learn a little more about the convolutional neural networks and the their assimilation with the graph neural network so the graph convolutional network so gnn can help us to perform the node classification and the graph classification and they can also perform the prediction related with link and edges so please make sure that when we are trying to solve the graph neural network related problem most of the cases not all the cases but the most of the cases the problems you will find related with node and the graph classification because graph could be subgraph too it could be part of a, it, a graph could be a smaller part of a very big graph and is related with classification and the node itself and the link or the edge prediction what kind of connectivity it is relationship type etc so it's very important for you to understand these facts we need to understand what are the graph neural network data models and there are two big data models are used one is called the single mode and next called the batch mode so when you have a single graph consists of large collection of nodes single graph so many nodes basically it's your single mode graph so when you are processing your graph data you are using node is reading however if you have a graph which is collection of various graph and each graph may have one or multiple node then it's called the batch mode so depending on what kind of graph you have you are going to process the data in the gnn either single mode or batch mode so that is very important for you to understand and the examples are given that is single mode you can have a document classification system where is a big graph consists of all the documents so each document rep represent one single node but they are still part of graph and that is a single mode data model versus if you have a molecular structure of a particular chemical element then each molecule is a different graph so that's why the number of graphs will be as many as the number of molecules but that is only for molecular classification or molecular structure related graph neural network next comes another important concept in graph neural network and that is called the node embeddings so in the natural language processing you must have heard the word embedding what is something similar is here so principle is really very simple if you could you know is read these three statements first nodes have neighbors and connection node have connection those connections establishes their neighbors second removing the neighbors and connections around a node node will lose all its information remember we have created the multi-directional or multi-graph a node can have multiple of connections so removing the neighbors and the connection around a node node will lose all its information as you are removing them so the neighbors of a node and the connections to the neighbors define the concept of a node because if you have no neighbors no connection there is nothing left in that node so the neighbors of a node and the connection to the neighbors define the concept of the node so these three principles are important to understand the node embeddings 
So node embeddings is represented as that. So every node represent its concept as a state of X. Then the node state produce the decision about its concept as an output O. So the final state, which is X underscore N of the node is normally called the node embeddings. So the task of all graph neural network is to determine the node embedding of each node. So by looking at the information on its neighboring nodes, if you look into the concept of node, node embedding in graph neural network, when you are processing the graph neural networks, basically what you do is that you are looking at the information for a particular node and all its surrounding neighbors. And that's whole idea is that you are determining the node embedding for the each node. So all the mathematical functions and all the uh, APIs and all the functionality in any given library is basically processing the node embeddings for the given node, which you are looking into because at any given time, you are looking at one single node. However, there is a little tricky when you're doing the parallel processing where the graph is split into multiple node in memory and each is shard or each particular parallel machine, each machine in parallel network is processing their own particular given node and everything is happening at side by side simultaneously. So the relationship between the GNN and CNN, that's why we call the graph convolutional neural network. So combining the convolutional neural network and the graph neural network is your graph convolutional network. Convolutional neural network, I'm going to be talking here a lot. There are lots of content available at my YouTube channel. Please look into that. So the simplest graph convolution neural network has three different operators, graph convolution, linear layer, and the nonlinear activation. When we are looking into the graph convolutional network, we have to understand few important questions. There is a lot more, but I have only added here, which we could learn in the next tutorial as well as they are good for us to get us started. So first we need to look into that image as graph data. So each node represent each pixel. So when we are looking into an image, image is a collection of pixels on X and Y axis. And each pixel has its value where it could be whether it's a grayscale image or it's a color image. Color image has a three channel RGB and each channel has its own pixel value on X and Y scale. So each node represent each pixel. So you have pixel, okay? And the node feature represent the pixel value. So edge features represent the Euclidean distance between each pixel. And that's very easy to understand. As you see this picture there, where every dot is going to be connected with eight other dots in, in that image. And remember, eight other dots, if they are in center, only the edge pixels will not have that many. So they are only going to have two, depending on where they are, two or three. So if you look into here, in this image, the adjacent pixels number 2457, so 2457 and 1367, there is a little distance between two because the 1367 has the little more or the slightly larger Euclidean distance wherever they are comparative to 2, 4, 5, 6. And that distance is enough to separate them. Here, as you could see that in the amnist example related with the convolutional neural network is very popular. You have source images are 28 pixel by 28 pixel. So if it is a 28 pixel by 28 pixel grid, 0 to 27, the number 7 is represented here. And each value in this space has the value of color. So grayscale, whatever value it can be. And if you look into the graph for this node, so every pixel is a node. So 28 times 28 equals 784 pixels you have. And every node is going to have the node and edges. And wherever the thicker edges will have higher value means what's going to happen is that pixel located to close to each other. So that's how you could figure it out that which pixels are more close, they will have higher number of connectivity versus the pixels which are different. So that's how you are going to build your own graph 
convolutional neural network for each digit. And then if you have 60,000 source images, then you can understand that how your information will be going to be processed. So each image is studied based on graph neural network concepts or graph convolutional network concept. The way we are processing the convolution in each and every image. Here is another example. And all of these images I have taken from different sources and where applicable, I have added their link at the bottom. So here is another example means showing the face structure in a complete graph. So this is so all the face landmarks are represented as the graph. This is very good example because I have worked on this problem. As you could see here that in this example, we are reading a receipt or an uh, purchase order or any document and understanding the different information available in this document. Here in this document, so each node represents the individual tax segment. So there is individual tax segment is there. And each feature represents the linkage between the two tax, two tax segments such as horizontal and vertical distances and the weight height ratio between the tax segment. So each feature, so the nodes and their features are being created as you could see here. And this particular, the information extraction, the graph convolutional networks for the OCR or, or the optical character reader, the biggest example is this Azure form recognizer. If you visit here, you can build your own form recognizer using the Azure form recognizer services. And I have done this in past and it's a really wonderful example for you to try. You can upload your gas receipt or your CFA or your CVS receipt and the system will automatically, not automatically, first you need to train it, but after training, it will detect all the items from your receipt and it will add all the values, all the pricing, and it will validate various other things. And you just really need minimum five images to train with. And you can add even more, but minimum five receipts to get you started. Once I will have time, I would definitely love to create a tutorial related with this. So this is a really uh, good example, and it's very useful. You just need to create all those fields, like for example, this fields one, two, three, you just define it as the social security number or these are the wages. So this is a form recognizer built for W2 form, but you can build for anything. And now we are going to apply all our fundamentals related with network X, as well as the GCN graph convolutional network using the PyG or the PyTorch geometric Python library. PyTorch geometric. It's a Python library for processing graph convolutional neural networks. It's an open source project, very popular as you could see 14.4 thousand stars. And this package is also named as PyG. Here in this tutorial, we are going to get some of the introduction so that you can get yourself started and you can start your own journey. So first, we are going to look into very quickly what is a tensor. So it's really in general, a tensor is a n-dimensional array where the n is greater than 2. It means if you have a multi-dimensional array where the dimensions are either 3 or more than 3, then you have a tensor. So let me import the numpy after we have imported the numpy. If you take a look at this deep learning book series, you can get more information about the metrics. And here is the definition really very simple is that you have a scalar vector matrix and the tensor. So tensor is a n dimensional array where n is greater than two. And as soon as you have that concept in your mind, you can get yourself started that, okay, if we have a tensor, that's going to have three or more dimensions in it. And here we are defining a three-dimensional array. X look like that way, and the dimension of X is 
3. It means this is a three-dimensional array. It's a tensor. Why we are learning tensor? Reason is that because in this pi geometric or pi g, everything is all about tensors. So very first thing, whenever you are going to use the pi geometric or pi g to handle your data, the data definition is going to have the architecture or the design related with tensor. So we have the second Jupyter notebook, which we are going to study further. So first we need to start ourselves to see what is our Python version. And I'm just coming into that, why we really need it. So I am running these Jupyter notebooks at the Google Colab because that's easier for me to have my all the environment ready. Here, as you could see that I have the torch version of 11.1 and because this machine does not have the GPU in a build, so even there is no GPU, but still this machine has the CUDA built into. So this is the PyTorch version, as you could see here, the version here in this machine is 1.10.0CU11. So based on that, whatever our PyTorch version is, we need to install all the torch geometric and its other related packages. So for the PyTorch, we need to install the torch geometric. Then after we need to install the torch spots and torch is scatter. And we are looking for exact version to match our PyTorch related dependency. So that's the reason we have made sure that everything is exactly the same what we are looking for. This machine is already having all these dependencies installed, so it may not take longer time for us to get ready. Now, if we import torch and if we import the data from the data module within the torch, everything should be working for us. So our environment is ready to play with PyTorch geometric now. So first thing is that PyG is a, is a collection of massive amount of test or benchmark data set as well as various functionality which required for us to process deep learning on graphs. For that reason, we can look into the data set first. And reason why we are looking into data set first, because that will help us to get ourselves not very deep, very complex math part, but at least a familiarity with the, the Pi G packages. So there are lots of data sets available. So as you could see here, torch geometric dot data sets. So you can look into the documentation and here you can see the data set cheat sheet and a collection of data sets are available. And why these data sets are good to start with? Because that's where you don't need to look for third party data. You can learn a lot just playing with the existing data sets. So here we are importing the enzymes data set. The data set is this object. And here as you could see that we are using TU data set. And if we are interested to understand what is TU data set, here is TU data set. Here we have variety of other data set. Okay. So based on this paper, these data sets are available. So you can choose whatever data set you want. So here we have selected enzymes data set. So you could see that we are taking the enzymes data set and result will be stored into this data set object. If we would want to have the mu tags or proteins or IMDB binary or Reddit binary, these are other data sets available within the TU data set. So total number of graphs are 600 here and the number of nodes are these and the edges are here and number of features, three features, okay, classes, six classes or the tasks here. So let's just understand very basic. So data set 600, which we have matched, okay. The number of classes, six classes, the number of node features, three, as explained by here. So we have already found out if we would want to understand the number of nodes and edges, we can also take a look. So now we can look into data set. So if we say what is data set here? So for example, if you would want to see what is data set, 
So data set is a enzyme data set with 600 graphs. So now what we are trying to do is that we are trying to store this data set first object and let's see what happened is data. So data is a collection of edge index x and y. So very first you need to understand what is inside data set and in order to understand we need to go back to look into the data handling in graphs. So torch geometric dot data and this is the data object. As you remember this is what we have taken here data this data and that data is this part type of data. So we need to look into what is age index. So the graph connectivity in CO format with shape two comma number of edges. So if you look into here and we say two comma number of edges, so one six eight, we can look into it here and you are going to get the number of edges one six eight approximate. Okay. The next we are looking into the X. So X node feature matrix with the shape number of nodes, number of nodes 37 and number of node features 3. If you look into here 37 number of features 3. So this is what and why is the target to train against. So if you would want to perform the training the target is also available for us. So this is the data. So now we have seen what is inside correct however if you would want to go more deeper remember just few minutes back we have completed our network x understanding so we can take this data convert to network x and we can immediately follow through what we have just learned so here from the torch geometric utility there is a conversion utility called to network x we are importing it and if you see here this data is part of data type correct so we are converting to network x graph conversion complete now this became a directional graph or directed graph of network x we have just completed this whole thing so this was the jupyter notebook we have very recently completed just in earlier section of this tutorial so we can go look into import network x and annex dot draw and this network graph for enzyme is look like this way. So we have immediate try to match what we have learned in network X and try to match with PyTorch geometric or Py G. Very quick test we have done. Now let's take another data set. So this is the Cora data set. So Cora data set is a collection of 2700 27 2708 or 2708 scientific publications okay and into one of the seven classes so there are 5429 links and about 1433 unique words this is our Cora data set now we are using planetoid this is the library and here we are within this planetoid we are taking the Cora you can go back to your documentation and here you can look into that planetoid we have Cora and here it is the Cora and this is the paper where they are talking about features etc. So this object Cora data set has this Cora data set we can look into the data set there is one number of graphs number of features and number of classes so one graph 1433 features and seven classes as you look into the Quora, one graph, 1433, seven classes. That's many features. That's so far okay. And there is one data set, lane is one. So we are taking this and storing as a Quora DS, so CDS. So CDS, again, we have X, edge index, Y, well mask, and test mask. We can go look into this definition of here. And as you could see here, these are the so we have x y edge index everything so that is available for us now we can look into for this one the number of nodes number of edges and is directed or not nodes edges is not directed graph so it's undirected graph and we can match again this with Quora data set so that's our same information 2708 these numbers are matches now what we could do is that we could remember CDS is our 
object where we have whole Quora data set type of data, which is data is type data is a module which is from pipe geometric. So as you could see here, this is for 1433, we have these shapes, there is one. So you, you are getting an idea that what these shapes are. It means for all these classes, we have 1433 features. So it's the same thing. So now what we are, we can take one, any one of it. So we are selecting one. We can look into its shape. It should say five by five of 1433. So number of graphs and number of features. And CDS is data. So you see here CDS is data and you can look into the definition age index. So this is the CDS and it's exactly CDS. So we can extract some of the information within the given data. Now if you would want to perform the training, you would want to look into all that thing as you could see here because we have train mask, well validation mask and test mask. So we can actually get that information here you could see that number of nodes to train number of nodes to test and number of nodes for validation so that data is also built into for us and as you could see here depending on number of why you have your target that values are match for you so that is only for training but in this tutorial we are not looking for training we will do part two for that reason so type CDS is data type. Again, we could do same thing. We could convert this to network X graphs. This is gonna be Chi graph. Now we can draw it. And if it will take some time, but after some time, this graph will be ready for you. It might take a few more seconds, so maybe a minute. So this was our network X graph. And if you would want to print more details about it, as you could see here, this graph was quite big because it has about 2700 nodes and about 10,556 edges. So there is the list of all these edges and the nodes and this type of directed graph. If you want to say, oh, I'm interested in particular node. So you select a particular node and depending on your node, you could say, I need the value. So you can say node number 2707. If you just give a random number, you will get an error because index is not available, but you can select a node which exists that's why you will get its shape so for example if we have these values here if we would want to take a random number here that's this is not random but it's, it's exist in our list as you see so everything is 1433 and it's just like we can select shape again the 10 of 1433 and that will be type of tensor so what I wanted to show you that these are the values, they are part of the source data set, but everything is inside a tensor here. So we have to understand what is a tensor and in the next Jupyter Notebook, we will learn how to create a new data using the tensor type in this PyG or PyGeometric library so that we could complete the loop here. If you would want to save your network graph to GraphML or Gephi, here are the ways you could. So there is like a write G, G E X F or write GraphML for your network X graph because remember we have used this network X graph to print. So this network X graph is just the network X object. So here you can save Cora E X, and here we can also save. Look into here as you can verify that Cora EX GX is saved here, same as the this graph ML is also saved. We can download them local machine and we can also view them in their respective applications. So what I will do is that at this point, I will show you this Cora data set. So this Cora data set, we have this already accessible as their graph ML format in the GEXS format. So let me show you. So here, this is the Quora graph has been opened into this YED. You can see this graph. So this is all the graph. You can see number of nodes, number of edges. And here is the 
node identity. So you have seen that we have used this Quora data set directly from Tor Geometric and we have worked on it. Now we are going to use this Quora data set directly from Network X. For that reason, what you need is that you need to have this Quora TGZ or compressed version of Quora data set uploaded to your machine. So this is the link where Quora TGZ can be downloaded and I have just uploaded it and simply you can right click upload and you can upload the file directly from your local file system to Google Colab. I had downloaded it. It's here. I will unzip it. I have unzipped it. Quora folder is created and Quora citation and content is listed here. So data directory is the content Quora. So it content is the parent directory here. So content Quora. So data is expanded here. Now Quora citation is the edge list. And now we can see the edge list is here. So target source and the label. So these are the citations for the document ID, source ID and target ID. So these are the citation. If we would say we want to add 10, you can get that many items. So you got the edge list. Then here are, you could see that from Panda's edge list. So this is a list if you would want to make sure that this is actually the Panda's Panda data frame because we have just did PD dot read CSV. So we have read this file from here and set the label for citations. Now we are converting the edge list to the GNX, so network X format. And then we are setting the node attribute GNX paper label. And now if you see here the GNX is available and 27085278 all that frame all pretty much same way we have looked into the Quora data set. So this is our GNX which is a graph type. We can show the graph image here. So here is the graph which is similar to that. It may not be identical because again just fully random. So as you could see here but there should be some visibility to make sure that it looks like that way. Now after we can figure it out how many nodes are there and again you know these are the nodes all the nodes available you can figure it out what the node and their labels are all the node data and here you see that read csv so we are reading the content here column names all the features in this so 1433 features so here is a w0 to 1432 so all the features are there and then last is subject so all the feature names from 0 to 1432 plus subject so these are all the features so we are reading this quora.content data set which is tab separated and there is no header and we are adding this column name for that so that's the node data and all the subjects we can look into 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 so these are the subjects so this is a common means unique values in node data subject so this these are the seven subjects so that's what you could validate it so pretty much same data set but we have did two separate examples one from pytorch geometric data sets and second from network here and i think this is just to see if the device in this machine so we actually have uh, gpu is not available that's why we have CPU is a CPU based machine and Quora data set. So this is just a Quora data set, which is I think very first object. And if you remember, we have also learned the adjacency metrics. So if you would want to build the NX dot adjacency metrics, you can pass your graph. So in this scenario, our graph is, let me see, our GNX is our graph so that will be our adjacency matrix and we can say a equals and then we can say a dot to dense so this is our adjacency matrix for Quora data set so everything what we have learned earlier here everything you could really apply in this so that pretty much covers the data 
various data sets available. We have checked two data set, Quora as well as the Enzyme data set from two different sources. So next, we are going to build our own graph, just a sample graph from scratch, and we are going to learn. And for that, we have to have the concept related with tensors, which we have just completed, are necessary. So this is again a different Jupyter notebook, but they are all hosted at Google Colab. I just want to make sure that required modules are available. I could have checked pip show these module name, but I'm just installing in case if there are, because I have researched the environment here. So everything is ready and PyTorch version we have, we are importing the data object. So very first, in order to build the data, we have to define what is X and what is the age index. And X and age index, we have already looked into as required. So we need the node feature metrics and we also need to give the number of ages. So here we are defining the age index and X here. So let me take this out. So we have defined age index. So let's see what is age index here. So as you could see here, this is our age index. And then we have X here. And if you see, they both are tensors. So they are torch.tensor, torch.tensor. So they both are tensors. So age index and combining them X and age index, we are defining our data. And if you look into data X and age index. So now our data is defined and that is pretty much, this is what we always, did, we did earlier when we were working on data related with. So if you see here data is so torch geometric, the data format is something like that. So we have created this data. So at this point, your data is available. We want to see what we have created very quickly. So we are converting to the G and type of G is directed graph. So we could import the network X and we can draw the graph. So if you look into here, it is start as a 0, 1, 1, 2. So 0 to 1, 1 to 0, 1 to 2, 2 to 0. So 0, 1, 2. So if you see here, so 0, 1, 2. So 0 to 1, 1, so 0 to 1, 1 to 0, 1 to 2, 2 to 0. So this must be 1. This can be 0 or 2, 0 or 2. So we have built this very quickly. Visually, we have learned that part. Now we look into the keys. So we already know this data we have just created by passing X and H. So these are the keys we, here we have. We found X, we found as index. There is no as attribute we found in data. Number of nodes, three nodes, zero, one, two. Number of edges, four, as you could see here. So we have already defined these nodes. So based on that, our node and edges were created and this is, this is our feature set. So number of features, one, and does it have isolated nodes? Is the self loops are there and is directed. So remember, we have also talked about self loop. If reference to ourself, the node is referencing to itself. Now we have another example. Here we are creating one, two, three, four. So, okay, and then here is a word. Let's change it to this way. So as you could see here, I have changed this tensor. So I, you can look into the edge index is this. Number of dimensions are two. So two dimensional edges are here. Then we have X and the number of dimensions are here is three. Creating data, number of edges, four. Number of nodes, here number of nodes two and the number of features are one. So number of nodes are two, features are one. And now we can see if the directed graph is a directed graph. Now we are converting this data to G. G became the directed graph that's printed. We can look this guy. So here you could see the edges, one to five, two to six, three to seven, four to eight. The way we have passed one to five, two to six, three to seven, four to eight. Here are the features. And here you could see the total number of nodes are nine, edges are four, and nodes and order is same. If you would want to save this graph, here is our, we have saved demo eight graph ML. This is, let me delete it. 
we do not have let's recreate it this demo graph is available we can look into how our xml look like this is 0 to 8 nodes are already available so this is a zero node and reason why i wanted to show you is that remember we have never added a zero node the zero node is added that's why the total number of nodes are nine so that's where we are but because of this zero node there are no connectivity has been established now if you would want to see what is inside the graph ml you will look into that is exactly what you are seeing here this generate graph ml each line for this for every line we are rendering here so that is exactly what we have seen here so now if we want to take this graph ml and we want to visualize it into one of the tool here these are the this is the demo 8 graph ml we have just created so i had downloaded it so this is the demo 8 open with yed this is the demo it and as you could see here it shows that there are nine nodes and four edges but due to some issue with how this these layers are created we could not visualize it so we can use this automated one click layout created so we could say this is not that good we can say just okay and here you could see that one two five two two depending on but because we do not have these node value rendered properly we cannot actually see the actual representation of our nodes similar to this Quora graph however this should give you an idea that whatever we have just built here that can also be visualized into the third party network tools all these jupyter notebooks which we have worked today they will be say they will be saved and we are going to export them to our this place where everything related with graph neural network is available all these three jupyter notebooks which we have just worked on are available here so these three notebooks are added here which can be accessible by anybody who would want to work on these notebooks so that's all we had in this first part of graph neural networks tutorial we have completed the fundamentals of graph we also learned the simple or the basic mathematics of the graph we combined our knowledge from the fundamentals of graph by creating the various types of graphs in the network x python package we also did various types of graph programming with the network x python package in python after that we had our very first introduction to the graph neural networks or the gnn we learned the relationship between the gnn and the cnn also once we understood the relationship as well as the applications of gnn we had our basic introduction of the PyG or the pytorch geometric package we looked into the various types of data sets available for us to use with PyG package we used a few different data sets and we loaded various graph data sets in both network x as well as in the PyG package and manipulated the data in between them and also visualize those graphs locally using network x as well as the external third party library such as yed finally we concluded ourselves in this part one of the tutorial by manipulating the various data sets that's all we had in this part one of the graph neural networks for the beginners and now i'm look, going to look forward to see you in the second part of this tutorial where we are going to spend most of our time working with graph neural networks with few real-time examples thank you so much for your time and i'm looking forward to see you in my next video